I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our data engineering playlist and we're going to talk about how to use case when in our SQL statements. Now, this is a very, very handy way of saying in one field of your return query, you know, uh, if the condition A exists, then give me this value back. If condition B exists, give me this value back. Otherwise, give me this other value. And it's a very, very handy way of doing categorization in your queries. Let's get to it. Need simple time entry for your team? Make sure to check out my time entry system. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so today we are doing case when. And this is an SQL query, and we're going to use our SQL Express database today. You can see I have two tables in this database, but I'm going to make a new one here with this script that I created to create a table called flower. And in order to do that, I'm going to uh, run a create table statement, uh, which will give me a few columns. <clears throat> it's got an identity column there that's an auto number. Uh, and you can see I've got flower colors shipped and, and we've got a primary key on there as well. And then we're going to insert some values into that table. We're going to insert a couple of roses. We'll insert a violet, uh, daisy, and an orchid. And that's all we really need in order to demonstrate our select case. Uh, we just need to have some data there that'll be good for doing a select case. So I'll just hit execute and you can see that my database was updated. So what I'll do is I'll right click on tables and I'll refresh it. You can see there's our flower table. I'll select top thousand rows um, just to get a new query tab open there. And you can see there is our database. And so uh, we've got our two roses and uh, red and yellow and we've got uh, you know a violet daisy and orchid in there and uh, that is enough to get us going and so what we can do is similar to the pre-populated query that you saw there the automatic query we can select uh, from the flower table and we're gonna put in our own fields this time instead of uh, the auto-generated fields which sort of grabs everything uh, in that table. And so to continue we can grab our flower column. We'll grab the color and the shipped and then the purchase uh, count. And that'll sort of give us uh, some simple fields that we have in our, our query and we can see those there. Now you can see there's the red underline there and in, at least in the TSQL or SQL Server Management Studio, it means that the, the uh, interface hasn't been refreshed. So you just go uh, Control Shift R and that will refresh uh, the table so that it knows that the table is there in the editor there. So um, that just helps to get rid of the underline there, the red underline, and then we can start our case statement. And so here we go, we can do a uh, case when. So this is when we're gonna uh, do an if condition A, then show, you know, uh, return value, you know, value one, else return value two. And so what we'll do is we'll do case when the purchase count is greater than 200, then we'll return best seller, else we will return regular and that will give us two categories that we can have in our query and and that's going to be really great uh, and really nice and easy to read for end users then after our else statement we are going to add the end keyword there and then we'll put the name of our field so this is the same as saying as uh, so as category on the end, the category is the name of our field that we want returned in our query. You could call it ABC or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be called category. Um, so uh, we can also reformat a little bit and different people like to format their case statements differently. Um, but the general gist of it is uh, it's case when, some condition, then 
you know, the return value, else some other return value, uh, and, and then the name of the field that you want to put in there. Now you could put as in there, um, in some dialects require it, I believe. But let's click that execute button and there we go. We've got our output. You can see now we have a new category field on the end there uh, of our query that says category. And it has uh, regular, 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 and bestseller and regular. And that is exactly what we want to see. And if I remove the source field, the purchase count field, um, because maybe we don't want to see that, that's okay. We can just show our category field instead. And so we could do the same thing with the ship field here. Um, so we have a ship field, which is a date. And so we could do some date comparisons uh, for a case statement. And in this case, we're going to add more than one uh, return value. So we're going to have more than one category. So this is where it gets really interesting when you're using uh, case when uh, statements. Uh, because you can have uh, quite a few uh, different return categories that you can use or different values uh, that you want to return. And so uh, that makes it very, very flexible. And it's also uh, pretty good performance on most databases. The case when uh, statement does perform pretty well, and that's a good thing. Uh, so here we go. We've got um, case when you know, shipped is greater than uh, 2023-0601. Then we'll put old in our return value, else we'll put recent. Oh, I guess that should be less than and not greater than <laughs> on my on my statement there. Let's go and change that. That's the shipped column, shipped column there. And we'll check for less than uh, 2023-601. We'll say it's old, otherwise say recent. And there we go, we've got our ship type. And we can hit execute on the toolbar and we can now we can see we have old records and recent records and uh, and that gives us our categories for the ship type. One of the really cool things about using case when is that you can use many whens. And so you can have many conditions that you want to check and they can be in order. Uh, so if you're looking at uh, degrees of, of a number or a date or something like that, uh, you can categorize your data nicely. Um, and so that makes it nice and handy. So we can say case when shipped is less than, uh, you know, June 1st, then we get old. But we can also say, you know, when shipped is less than uh, another date that's closer, more recent, uh, we can say, you know, if it's, you know, a more recent date, then we'll say normal. Um, otherwise, we'll say, you know, it's recent. And so that's where the else comes in. Uh, so you can have multiple statements in there. Um, and you can see now we've got old uh, for, the, for the old one. We've got recent for the very recent ones. And then we've got normal for ones that are in between there. And that is exactly what we want to see there uh, for that. And you can see there's the case case when uh, it'll execute each one in sequence. And whatever one it hits first, it's gonna, if that one turns true, then that's going to be the value. And that's exactly what we want to see there. So I can remove that field just like I did for the other one. I remove the actual date field. And maybe I have a report and I only want to show the types or something like that. And now I can see I have my categories which have been created and that's exactly what I want out of my case when statement in SQL. And of course from there you can do things like create a view and have your case when inside of a view. And in this case we'll create the flower view and we'll say that it is the, the select statement that we just created and we can hit execute on that and that's going to create a new view with our case statement return values in it in columns and so if i go to views now i can see if i select top thousand for flower view again i can click inside of here and i can go Control shift r and it'll refresh the editor but you can see down below there we've got our values that we want to see in our view 
with the ship type and the category and you can see uh, this is our statement that we put in case when then this when something else then do that else return a final value and that's how you do it in sql interested in more articles and content like this make sure to check out my patreon the link is in the description